Hey guys, what is going on? Astralis had an incredible tournament at DreamHack Marseille, so I hope you guys like Astralis demos. We've been looking at quite a few of them over the next coming weeks, hopefully get some good ones from IEM Sydney as well. But today we're going to be focusing on Zipex, and some of the things that he considers when he's clutching, how he maximizes his chances of winning these 1vx situations, and really punishing any mistakes made by the opposition. So in this particular round here, He's going to end himself in a 1v2. He could have planted the bomb after this trade here, but Zipex wants to win this round, and he knows straight away that players are just going to be rotating into the market area, and as soon as they hear him start planting the bomb, they're going to push together and trade onto him. So he decides he wants to go towards the A site. Nico makes a mistake, straying away from Rain, thinking he can maybe uh, flank into the B apartments area. Zipex is, or well, he's already rotating in to try and go towards A site, catches Nico, and notice as soon as that kill came in, Zipex is repositioning and changing his approach to get towards the A site straight away. Rain is now in a mind game. They're both mind gaming with each other. What site Zipex is going to go to? You can see Rain plays this relatively smart. He puts himself kind of in the middle, clears out middle, makes sure that Zipex is either coming through the apartments again or coming through one of these extremities over towards the A site. Small thing to notice as well is that Zipex runs through a palace rather than a main because Rain would have heard him. He just minimizes his chances of being uh, found out earlier. Now the second thing I want to talk about is this smoke here, and this is very good in the 1v1. Is the fact that he uses this smoke to increase the amount of angles Rain has to check on coming into the site. And you can notice he kind of, it makes sense for Rain to be in this mid area in this scenario. And you see as Rain comes in, he's not sure if Zipex around triple box. Can he be default? He could be backed off into firebox. Zipex just straight takes the fight and just wins it. And it's a great way to take a 1v1, a very assertive way to do it, but definitely not the incorrect way to do it. Obviously, he does leave himself open to CT. But what he's playing at is if Rain was in CT in this scenario, he's most likely rotating over from the B apartments area or from the market area. So he knows he's got a couple of seconds just to sit on top of this box, take this fight if he does pop up from the stairs area or from that jungle kind of area. And then after a few seconds, he probably would have fell off the box and maybe moved into a more passive position to try and work out where exactly Rain was coming from. So continuing along, we see Zipex's next clutch, again a versing phase, this time the very next map of Nuke, a map that Astralis is looking very strong on. But again, we're going to see some similar themes to last time with, uh, last time with what Zipex does. And we can really focus in on them and how he really punishes FaZe, even though they make less mistakes from last time. Nico doesn't stray away from anyone or exist in a Guardian who are the last two left alive. But it's really just a great round from Zipex overall. If you're entering the B site, always throw that Molotov, that's a very basic thing. You'd hopefully, most of you should already know that by now. And we get two nice entries here to start off with. And notice Zipex Molotov's vent off again to give himself the maximum chance to reposition. And also if he wanted to, again notice he's giving up the fact that he could potentially plant the bomb. In this scenario, though, Exist and Guardian are playing a little bit more uh, safely than with Nico last time. Nico ran out by himself, we saw in the other pass. We're Exist and Guardian playing relatively close together, playing this as I said you probably should, which is in a, a 2v1 situation sticking together. So Zipex ends up rotating out here towards the A site, and he plants here. Now notice the fact that he knows that they could have quickly come up the vent, so he does a couple of jump spots here to see if anyone has come up trying to take the fight early. And then he moves again, very similar to last time. Notice the fact that he knows the map's no good on uh, nuke, but hopefully you get what I mean. But if you come down to this vent area here, it is the closest position to rotate back towards the B site. He knows if they want to rotate the other ways, they either have to have followed him up the ramp and they're going to have to come off this way, which is a lot longer route. And exactly the same with if they'd come back up secret. It's a lot further to come back in through mini and peek him onto this scenario. So again, he's taking the fight exactly like with Rain onto the closest possible choke point that the players will be coming through. So you see he gets up here, catches Guardian. And another thing it tells him right now, and he can just get up even higher, you can see Exist is trying to check, he takes him out straight away. But one thing you can work out straight away is the fact, that, the fact that Guardian comes up the ladder almost instantly tells you the fact that he's not waiting for Exist or anyone to come in. If we look at the map, as I said before, if he was waiting for Exist to maybe come in through mini or rotate up through ramp, he'd probably hold off and he's push up the vent area so they can try and push at the exact same time onto Zipex. One of them draws the attention, one of them get into a better position. But because the Guardian comes up almost straight away, Zipex knows it's very likely the second player was planning on coming up this ladder as well. So he takes an even more aggressive angle as we saw, looking more into the vent. And again, just takes out Exist and a really nice clutch. Round 20 versus Fnatica Mirage, where we see one of Zipex's more impactful clutches. We can see they're down by five rounds on the CT side. Their economy is in tatters. They really need to win this round. It's a big force up from them. And notice straight away, Glaive peeks up here. He's getting information as what's going on. And he spots players falling away. And this preempts Zipex movement back towards the middle area. So you can see he automatically is starting to rotate away. Magis gets a little bit aggressive. This kill... Uh, forces Zipex to stay a little bit longer, but this is something very hard to teach, and Zipex one of the best players at it, is preemptively anticipating where players are going to move to from the information he has. He doesn't get, he doesn't over rotate, and you see straight away he's down here towards the underpass area. And one great thing about what Zipex does here is instead of just calling they're falling away from A and maybe pushing up middle or 
playing back and just trying to get onto the B site. He finds this kind of middle ground where he's less likely to be checked. And you can see, I think Fnatic were maybe anticipating coming back underpass into the connector area until Zipex cuts them off right now. As you can see, he gets the first call onto Crims. And I think maybe it was just Crims going underpass, maybe cut off the rotations. But straight away, another thing we're noting about Zipex. He's moving instantly. They've worked out where he is. He's straight away repositioning. They don't know right now. You can see Fnatic have moved that onto the site. They don't know if Zipex is maybe trailing them. They just said, let's just book it out of here, get into a position where Zipex can't uh, trade us. We've seen Dupree has just gone down to Golden, but the information he's gotten here is that the bomb hasn't crossed the site yet. They know that the players aren't quite in the position to plant. And Zipex takes this opportunity to straight away jump through the smoke, anticipating the players to still be worried about what Dupree was doing and really clearing out that market area and thinking that possibly he was back behind in the apartments area. This is an important thing to know. Zipex has got here very quickly. If you're thinking about this from Fnatic's point of view, Fnatic has spotted Zipex when they're here, right? They've had to run onto the site and that, that's as far as they've had to run, right? So to Fnatic, they haven't covered much ground. They had to fight Dupree for a second, but besides that, they haven't too many delays. Zipex, on the other hand, was all the way here, he's gotten a kill, fallen back this way, up and around, and now he's on short. That's a much further trek for Zipex to take. And you can see the players aren't really anticipating this at all. Golden is going to check here, he's making sure nothing's coming apartments. And this whole while, Zipex has found himself up here. Sure, it's that potentially could have already killed Golden, but the bomb plant decides to continue going down. Nothing wrong with this from Fnatic. But Zipex straight away isolates this 1v1, and this is a very important factor of playing clutches, is you always want to isolate 1v1s. You don't want two people peeking at one time, because that's how you lose, you have a bigger disadvantage. So Zipex isolates the bomb planner. You could have argued Letko tried to fall away this way, but he doesn't really know uh, what Zipex is doing. And Golden moves into this smoke. And Zipex uses the information he has. He knows that Golden was at the bench area. He knows that Golden moved to the left when he spotted him initially. He knows Golden moved this way. He could potentially wrap back around bench. But Zipex, again, hedging his bets in this scenario in the 1v1. They both know where each other are. That he's going to try and walk through this smoke. He avoids that flash. And he swings out quite wide here. Notice he does anticipate the bench movement. He's going to keep swinging, keep swinging. And the thing is, he knows that now that Golden's not here, there was an opening for Golden to potentially move to this pillar here. But again, he's not likely to peek Zipex in the scenario. He's going to try and probably sneak around. So Zipex thinks after clearing this, he just picks the next most likely spot for Golden to potentially come out. And he is 100% correct about it. One thing Zipex is very good at is he would be the kind of player where he's the one crossing to a different position like this. And we can see this in a round like this one on Nuke, not really a clutch scenario, but you can see how Zipex, is, as soon as he's given the opportunity, is moving. And this is what you have to worry about with players like Golden and stuff when they're playing this scenario. Zipex is very aware of this. Another thing that just comes with the experience with the game, you can see he uses this knowledge, takes out the player in the smoke, and another great clutch by him in the 1v2. The last clutch I want to cover a little bit more of a theory crafting, maybe talking a little bit more about Edward. If you watch the game, you remember this one where Edward dives down to the B site in the 1v1 with Zipex and gives Zipex an easy cleanup to win out the first map versus Na'Vi. But I want to talk about a little bit of theory crafting and how patient Zipex is with his clutches. Again, he's not rushing anything. He's very calm of mind. That's another important thing to consider is it's just experience. If your heart is racing 100 miles an hour, you're nervous. Obviously, Zipex is nervous in these scenarios. But it's all about controlling that. Uh, finding yourself the best openings possible and not really getting too anxious and worrying about what you're doing. So again, here's just a very standard 2v3 looking for some kind of opening and then trading into the scenario to end up in a 1v1. I've talked about this in previous videos. And you can see Zipex will find this opening sneaking around. Zeus isn't looking. And that's just a nice trade. He knows where Simple is uh, from the position that he killed Device from. And notice how patient Zipex is right now. He knows, again, Where's the player going to come from? Again, this is another calculated risk from him. He's not 100% sure where Edward is. And right now is what I want to talk about. So I just want to go back to the thing. Again, this is the same with the timing. Edward could potentially be coming up heaven. That's not really heaven. That's a bad line. But coming up through here. But again, Zipex is taking the risk, trying to find out where Edward is, just playing patient around the smoke, thinking Edward might be flanking. He's correct in the scenario. And I want you to think about what you just heard right now. And this was very hard to watch in the moment, is that the fact that Zipex is planning, and this is what Edward does. And he breaks the vent, gives away 100% of his positioning, and then he founds out, oh damn, I done mucked up. And, I mean, that's the easiest 1v1 Zipex has ever had in his life, probably. I do want to give Edward a little bit of a pass in this one, though. Again, though, before we go back, notice Zipex was very contempt on the fact that he could have vent drop. He knew this was a factor to Edward, and Edward obviously knows the vent drop was open. The vent was gone. He could potentially drop. What I want to talk about is the fact that as Zipex runs the site right now, he, he's out about here. He takes maybe two steps. And then you hear that metal sound. And that's what Edwards hears from the middle of the squeaky door area as he's flanking in. And he straight away drops, thinking that this noise he's sound, he's heard, sorry, is either Zipex coming out vent, he's either jumped onto the box like so, 
this is all metal. Uh, if you jump on these a certain way, sometimes they make a... There you go, there's a metal sound every now and then. And to Edward, it's probably more likely that the metal area is down the B site. I know I personally associate these metal sounds. I'm trying to differentiate between the upper and lower sites. I think about metal, jumping on metal. I consider that more in line with the B site rather than the A site. Even though this is all metal, I think this is probably the way Edward was thinking. So... I mean, you give him a little bit of a hard time, it was hard to watch, but I think this is maybe what he was thinking, and maybe a good way to fake people out is if you want to try and jump on the metal on this side, try and give away that you're maybe falling down the vent area. But besides that, guys, there's not really much else to it. Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you all in the next video.